As we have improved our ability to see into space and discover new things, like the seven new planets that were recently discovered around a nearby star, we're seeing that the universe, just on a statistical basis, in terms of the probabilities of taking the number of galaxies times the number of stars in the galaxy times the number of planets for each star, each one of those numbers is larger than the number of grains of sand on the beach, in, on, uh, on all of the beaches on Earth. And so even if you say life is a small, small probability that any planet would harbor it, when you multiply by the number of planets, the number of planets around stars, the number of stars in the galaxy, and the number of galaxies, I believe you come up with a pretty likely number that we're not alone. Now what that looks like, I don't know. Microbes to little green men, I have no idea. But I'm, I'm fairly convinced we will find that we're not alone. For the United States and for the world, for that matter, to begin to exploit space in a real economic way and to have NASA move on to take people beyond low Earth orbit again, I think we really need to find a way to lower the cost of getting to space. When it costs you eight, nine, ten thousand dollars a pound just to get to low Earth orbit, your McDonald's quarter pounder is worth two thousand five hundred dollars. It's not a very cost-efficient way to go. And so you see many of the commercial companies right now attacking what I think is the hardest problem, and that is to increase the reliability, the frequency, and yet lower the cost of access to space. Once that happens and once that's done, and I think it will be done, then I think you will really see the opportunities open up because business models will be so much more easy to, to make close uh, and, and investment to be secured and commercial activity can be then that much more viable.